Fancy. Wrong number means that was something different, you moron. Is this a dream? Oh, oh, sorry. I must have fallen asleep while filming my review. Been watching the Freddy movies for the last 24 hours straight, so I have a bit of trouble staying awake. But don't worry, I'll finish filming my reviews. Oh, I gotta wake up a bit. Oh. Okay, so let's continue our Nightmare on Elm Street marathon with the second movie in the franchise, Freddy's Revenge. Well, Freddy won big time in the first movie, and there's no character from the first movie in the second movie, so who is he taking revenge against? It just doesn't make any sense. It's also very different from the first movie, because Freddy's trying to live again. Not quite sure why he would want to live again, I mean, he can do pretty much what he wants in the dream world. But let's give the movie a chance. So the movie starts with a nightmare. The new kid is sitting in a bus driven by Robert England. So, we know that's going to end well. <laughs> but that's all that happens. Actually, in this movie, they're doing things very differently. Freddy doesn't kill people in their dreams. I'll explain more when we get to the first death. Nancy Thompson, 1428 Elm Street. Turns out the new kid, Jesse, has moved to Nancy's house. They even find Nancy's diary. Horrible, ugly, mm. dirty, under the sheets with me, <laughs> tearing at my nightgown <laughs> with his steel claws. For some reason, things get really warm in this room. <sighs> The kid finds Freddy's glove in the furnace, and Freddy tells him to kill for him. Kill for me! So Jesse makes friend with another kid in school. And we also learn that their PE teacher is very sadistic. Hello, dirtballs. For some reason, Freddy makes the house become extremely warm, to the point where one of their birds explode mid-flight. I don't know why, but the father thinks that Jesse is responsible. What are you talking about? You know damn well what I'm talking about. What'd you use? Firecrackers? You know what he did? He used a goddamn cherry bomb. Oh, stop. That's what he did? Look, you can't talk to me like that. After that, Jesse goes to a bar and bumps into his PE teacher. It's kind of weird that the PE teacher, after bumping into a student in the bar, would make him run laps in school. But hey, don't worry, this asshole gets what he deserves. You know, it's funny, I've heard this movie is known to have a lot of homoerotic elements. This scene is one of those. Since when can Freddy kill people when they're awake? And how come that guy has Freddy's glove? I don't get it. What a masculine scream. Jesse starts hearing Freddy's voice and having visions. He knows something is going on, so he confronts his dad about the house. They told me something about it, yeah, but You I... mean you knew something about this and oh, you... come on, Cheryl. How do you think we got such a good deal here? All of a sudden, the toaster catches fire. The parents don't even realize that their kid must be right. Even after that. Look here, Cheryl. You want him plugged in? After that, Jesse and his girl from school, Lisa, Go to the place where Freddy was bringing his kids. Fred Krueger kidnapped 20 kids and brought them here and killed them. There's a party at Lisa's place and Jesse is starting to act strange. Jesse ends up talking to Lisa and it nearly sounds like he's realizing he's gay. I feel like I'm losing my mind. 
I'm sure some people have theorized that this part represents his homosexuality acting out, with Freddy being the embodiment of his sexuality. Something is trying to get inside my body. Yeah, and she's female and she's waiting for you in the cabana. And you want to sleep with me. Now, I'm sure it's completely unintended, because I saw an extra on the Blu-ray where the director addressed the fact that people were seeing a lot of homosexual elements in the movie, but it seems it was not on purpose. So, Jesse kills his friend and runs home. No. <laughs> Jesse, my God, what happened? I Meanwhile, the party is boiling up. And that's when they did the worst thing they could do in a Freddy movie. They brought him outside of the dream world. That's a scene that is widely regarded as the most stupid in all of the Freddy franchise. It completely contradicts every other movie, because Freddy shouldn't have any power outside of the dream world, and there he's causing the water to boil and flame to burst out. So, after a confrontation around the pool, Freddy walks away. This movie gets even weirder. Lisa goes back to this power plant where Freddy was bringing his kids, and she starts seeing all kinds of weird stuff. I didn't realize Freddy was able to affect people when they were awake. Somehow, Lisa thinks she can bring back Jesse by kissing Freddy. Gross. <laughs> How come Freddy looked like he could control fire throughout the whole movie? and he burns to death right there. So, it turns out Jesse survives, which is highly unusual. It's rare for Nightmare on Elm Street movies to have a happy end. Except, it's not over yet. Jesse, it's okay. It's all over. So, in my opinion, it's really not the best movie in the franchise. It's really a weird movie. It does keep the blur between reality and dream, as in the first one, but there are too many contradictory elements in there, so it's just an okay movie. We'll see how you'll enjoy that, moron. Wait, why is the movie playing again? Wow, that's weird. Wait. DVD is not even in there. Freddy's here. You'll watch it again and again, and that's enough after that. Oh, please, no. 